Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On the Rest from Off the Cuff. Today, I have a really cool strap review for you from the famous brand Hirsch. A little about them, they're actually a family-run company. And really what sets them apart is that they're able to produce high-quality products at scale and have many model lines that are stocked in volume, right? Versus a lot of times these more niche manufacturers, you know, they're kind of hard to come by and there's not a lot of middle ground. It's either you're kind of uh, getting a lot of uh, almost near custom level straps uh, that may take some time uh, to get and that don't necessarily have a lot of uh, reach in terms of sales channels or uh, you have stuff that is just, you know, hyper generic that is uh, almost the same product across a lot of different storefronts. And that is really what I think is special about Hirsch. Uh, they have a lot of distinct models and they actually are a huge company and they're carried across tons of different retailers. The particular retailer I purchased this one from was actually the UK based Watch Obsession, uh, which actually have a close relationship with Hirsch and even manage hirschstraps.com as a dedicated site apart from their main storefront. Now, in terms of this particular product, this is actually one of my favorite uh, rubber dive straps. And if you guys are fans of the channel, you've probably seen this before. Uh, even if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen it before as well. Um, but I thought it was about time that I actually made a dedicated review for this particular strap because I think it's really that good. Uh, so Hirsch described this as uh, being made to withstand whatever you can throw at it. The Hirsch accent is the adventurer's choice of strap. It will go to the edge with you thanks to its peerless water resistance and tearproof properties and the lattice texture adorning the upper layers give it definitely a distinctive and complex look. It's an ideal accompaniment uh, to sports and dive watches. This is the Hirsch Accent in their natural rubber, and this is in the black colorway. And yeah, I, I think it's pretty awesome. And hey, why not do a dedicated review to a strap that I honestly have purchased so many times over the years. I, I probably have you know, five or six of these straps, um, you know, all around on different watches. And uh, today uh, it's actually uh, being kind of showcased on this great uh, Raven Trekker. So with that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. Okay guys, so I really love the aesthetic of this strap. You guys know uh, I love vintage style straps. Uh, I feel like this is more contemporary as much as I love you know, uh, a great tropic strap or an isoframe, this definitely is gonna be, for me anyway, uh, a little bit more versatile because it doesn't just kind of settle for a vintage or, or a retro aesthetic. Like it actually, I think, you, it, it that probably is a great pair for this particular Raven because it combines old and new, right? Gilt dial, big crown, but you're also getting ceramic, you're getting, uh, you know, modern loom and all that. So when you get something you can pair it with, right? Uh, I think that just looks awesome. And there's something about this strap that I think also gives it a bit of kind of a military aesthetic. I think it does that really well too, a bit, bit of a dressy military. Think dress blues, right, for the Marine Corps, where it's dressy, but it's also a uniform, right? Um, there's something about that that I think uh, definitely crosses over. I could easily see me wearing, you know, something like a combination like this with my dress blues, uh, you know, if I was still active duty, and uh, you know going to the Marine Corps ball or something like that I think this would be a great pairing as much as I love bracelet you guys know that's kind of my number one I'm big on bracelets and then I get down to rubbers and straps and uh, and sailcloth uh, which I really enjoy as well and then I'm very particular about leather um, these rubber straps again they just have a lot of nice features uh, so let's go through some of the options you can get this in 20 22 and 24 millimeter widths this is in 20. Uh, it does have a two millimeter taper down from 20 to 18 they all have a two millimeter taper so if you buy the 22 it'll taper to 20 if you buy the 24 it'll taper to 22 at the pin buckle end uh, and it actually has quite a few options for the pin buckle and that is one of the advantages you get by shopping uh, from uh, watch obsession is that they will actually option this out typically if you were to buy it from another retailer whatever they have in uh, stock is whatever they have in stock which by default will typically be a polished buckle here I could choose polished uh, or brushed stainless steel or blacked out and then it's also compatible with silver or gold deployment clasps which you can actually choose to pair uh, at checkout which I think is pretty smart uh, I do enjoy the length here I think these are great for daily wear I do have a slot 
slightly larger wrist um, at seven and a half inches, but uh, the 80 millimeter length and then 120 millimeter length works perfectly for me. That's one that I always look for just because I feel like that gives me the right amount of ex access tongue to where when it's actually wrapping around, uh, it doesn't feel like it's on its last rung uh, and it's a little bit more centered. So I, I do like that. This also does feature quick release toolless spring bars, which is great. Uh, so you can remove them very easily. Of course, this particular watch has drilled lugs, but that makes it even easier. The, the bracelet on this actually has uh, quick release uh, lugs as well, or, or spring bars. So, I mean, it's kind of the way of the future. So nice from that perspective. And it's not like they use really oversized holes or anything. So the nice thing is these quick release spring bars are gonna seat really nicely in these more traditional drilled lug size uh, sizes. Some watches like Seiko within their Prospects line or uh, Citizen within their Promaster line are going to have larger uh, lug holes. Uh, so sometimes you're gonna get a little bit of movement here. You're gonna see uh, still nicely secured, no, no access clicking. These go for 115 directly from Watch Obsession. Um, or, you know, again, it'll be probably listed as uh, herstraps.com. Um, but they're really, really nice, and I think they are worth that. Even if you're putting it on a watch, you know that maybe isn't super expensive, under a thousand bucks. I think it can make it just feel really special and really signature to you, right? It's like you get a car, you put it on a nice set of wheels, you know, your rim and tire package, and then you know, of course, you want to stance it out. Uh, you know, I I'm big on sway bars uh in terms of actually feeling like the car is going to be a little bit quicker because you can drive a little harder flatter in the turn but that's a side tangent for any of you gear heads that are out there that are watching this uh hey i'm with you i'm, I'm fighting the good fight uh suspension mods uh do make you you know they they matter but I, i'd say it's in a similar vein here right uh as nice as this watch is on the factory bracelet option there is something that just feels more personal about putting it on a signature strap like this. And I think this looks really fantastic. And since this is a dedicated strap review video, I'm not going to cut away and put this on the wrist. I'll go ahead and demo that for you. For those of you who may have never put a pin buckle style strap on, you can see here, we're going to go, wham, bam. Nicely tucked. Uh, this upper keeper is fixed. This lower keeper is sliding. And you can see I did choose the uh, the nicely brushed. And I think that kind of goes with the tool aesthetic. Uh, and again, that's one of the nice things about Watch Obsession is you can actually choose that out while you're in the checkout versus just kind of having to read the small print or compare the pictures uh, that you might get from another retailer. But man, this thing... It's just gorgeous. I love the shapes. Uh, you can see there, it just has some depth there. It is blacked out, but you can see there's a lot of visual play. Uh, it's similar to when you think of something like a nice bevel on a watch, right? Here you have a great undercut. You know, that's where, uh, you know, Raven kind of changed the formula. But in a similar way, when you think about contouring, you also want to have some nice strap contours. Uh, and you can see it's, it's, slightly thicker on the upper area than it gets thinner. So it not only tapers width wise, it tapers thickness wise, which is great because now you have a little bit more support, a little bit more strength and thickness up here where you're gonna be really wanting to keep that watch head nice and secure. Uh, but of course, if I, uh, you know, bring the uh, the watch really close to the camera, you're gonna get a lot of lens distortion and it's gonna appear a little bit bigger. <coughs> oh. Sorry about that. I just, whew, down the wrong pipe. Um, so what I like to do is actually just tighten up the shot here and just frame it a little tighter. And so that way you can still get a detailed look. You can see how nicely centered it is. You can see the ends on the strap nicely rounded. Everything flows really beautifully. And having that little bit of peak again in contouring, it just helps this flow feel very, very sporty. It just injects it with, I think, a very masculine uh, look and it feels very, very sturdy, right? Um, and it should, right? You sh when you're putting a, a strap made for a tool watch onto it, it should instill a certain level of confidence there. Of course, you know, if you really are worried about spring bar failures and stuff like that, you could always throw it on some type of NATO, uh, you know, pass through 
nylon or fabric strap but for the most part i mean you'll be good to go uh, when it comes to something like this especially as long as uh, you're making sure that those spring bars are seated correctly and uh typically you're gonna do that right because that's one of the beauties of having the quick release spring bar is that the saving time lining everything up, you can kind of just get it, get it locked in, and then you kind of get the switch over, um, and then you know that it's in there. Actually, I can probably just demo that for you right now. So with that said, why don't I pop this now back off and uh, show you guys what I mean. So right normally when you have a spring bar uh you're trying to get everything in you got your little tool and and everything like that another nice thing is because this is rubber right they can make the fitment and the tolerance very tight because you don't necessarily need to now fit in a tool because you can just click this down here and then once that you see the little switch is over and up then you know it's locked in and you're safe Right, and then of course there's not a lot of leverage here for this to accidentally scoot over, so you never have to really worry about that. But while we're on the underside, let's go ahead and take a look. You can see there is a bit of contouring there so that it's not laying directly on your wrist, which means there's gonna be some breathability, which is nice. Although the ventilation, you'll probably have to get down to these holes, um, you know, so it's not gonna be perforated or anything, but because of that clear flow, it's definitely very helpful. And you can see, uh, you know, nicely signed so you know this is the genuine article it's very very nice a very plush feeling and very uh you know i would say very premium feeling there's definitely something to be said about uh just a premium product and how it can really uh step up the overall aesthetic of your watch and i think again <clears throat> this is a really nice example because i do i do love a good raven dive watch i think they're very timeless very classic uh and they do a really great job of kind of combining different uh you know, little different design cues and modernizing them and getting it all to flow together very seamlessly within a particular theme. If you are looking for the review of this particular watch, definitely look down in the uh, the channel history uh, so you can kind of, uh, you know, if you, if you are very interested in this watch, I believe it's sold out at this point. But, you know, uh, Steve Laughlin, the guy who runs Raven, is such a great guy. I wouldn't be surprised if you just emailed him and he could dig something up for you uh, from that perspective. Uh, just because that's just, you know, that's one of the beauties of micro brands is the, the level of kind of direct contact you can have. Um, and it's kind of cool to, you know, again, take something that's very unique, right? Uh, maybe not in super high demand the same way a vintage Big Crown Rolex would be um, or even a mill sub, right? Because there's definitely some mill sub vibes here with the sword hands. Um, you know, maybe not that level of de desirability, but still there is a certain level of scarcity because they're done in small production batches. So this isn't a watch you're going to just randomly see on somebody's wrist, uh, you know, when you're out uh, at dinner or at the mall. It's a very deliberate choice to do something like this, purchase something like this. And again... I think pairing it is also very deliberate as well when you do something like this. This isn't just any old generic uh, rubber strap. Like this is one where you kind of have a little bit of foresight, a little bit of vision. Something like this would look great on, you know, uh, Seiko Alpinist as well. So great for sports uh, oriented stuff. I know uh, now uh, so many brands are moving away from dive watches uh, and really moving into kind of that everyday adventure, you know, explorer alternative type of watch. Um, and not everybody loves bracelets. So stuff like this, of course, is nice. And then another thing is when you are out adventuring and let's say you don't want to scuff up your bracelet, you pop the bracelet off, you put it on a piece of uh rubber like this and man it can be something very very special so guys for me uh closing thoughts very excellent wear and construction um it's what you've kind of come to expect from a brand like hirsch uh you know they're not a flash in the pan uh type of brand at all i believe this uh strap is actually been copied uh, by some other brands already uh, to kind of, uh, you know, take 
this great kind of iconic aesthetic and apply it uh, to their own kind of more bargain uh, level strap. But I will say this thing is definitely just so well constructed. It feels great. Uh, it looks really nice. And you guys saw on the wrist, it looks good. It looks great, light out, you know, stretched out like this very instagrammable um and it's just very comfortable and premium feeling and that's one of the things things can cost a lot but they don't always feel like they cost a lot i will say when you have this in hand and on wrist it absolutely does feel like it costs a good amount and it does it's not a cheap strap by any means um but it's not you know some one where you're really just paying just for the name, right? Like you're actually paying for the design because this is intrinsic to their catalog um, and their design language. Uh, but you know, it's also well engineered. You got the free keeper here. They're actually two different pieces. They could have easily made them one and kind of saved some money, right? But uh, what they did is, hey, this is a little thicker so you can hold down that extra tongue there. Um, and then of course you have the little posts to keep this one fixed. So uh, it's nice and then the pattern carries on really beautifully. So there's just nice attention to detail and things that typically, you know, uh, a non-watch enthusiast probably would never notice, but hey, a watch enthusiast who's all about those fine details, all about those little, uh, you know, ornate uh, things you can kind of deep dive into that make a watch or a watch pairing or a watch accessory uh, appealing to them, uh, you know, there's a lot to appreciate here. So again, uh, if you guys liked the video, please do it like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks guys.